right, well, I got another one, and I think this one is a repair. So I'll take a look at it. I don't remember which one this is. I think it's a citizen. I'll put the name at the top. I've kind of forgotten, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, I bought a couple. Oh, messy. All right. Should be, it's a quartz, but it should be pretty unique. It's okay, but it looks cool. I can fix it. Interesting. Yeah, I know it's not working, so we'll have to take a look at it. All right, let's see what I can see about it. Time is what we make it. A single moment can be unforgettable. This is the power of wearing a Bulova. Make bold moves that reverberate across generations. So this is a fairly special watch. Uh, it's not particularly expensive watch, of course, but it is a unique watch by Bolivar, uh, which comes from around the turn of the century. It was actually uh, produced as part of their millennia collection of watches. Uh, and this one in particular is the Bolivar Millennia Vibra Alarm Watch. Um, so what makes this particular model special is very custom uh, movement. It's a Japanese movement, but it's a very custom movement that, that combines quartz technology with both mechanical vibration, excuse me, and tone alarm systems. Now, I got this watch at a really good price, and I have to say it pays to be a little bit sneaky when you're looking around on, on eBay. Um, this watch normally goes for $100, usually non-working, and about $200 for, uh, you know, working condition, uh, which is Pretty interesting uh, considering that um, I got it for $30. Now I'll explain why. Uh, it was actually, I looked for um, women's watches because this watch was produced during a time when watches were a little bit smaller. Watches like this were considered, you know, this is a 38 to 39 millimeter case. And at the time watches like this were considered a little bit more professional for a man to wear with a, with a suit. But pe people today usually don't actually know what this is, and they call it a women's watch, like a big women's watch, and which it isn't. Total cost for me was $37.95 shipped with tax. Um, now it's pretty fantastic considering the fact that the MSRP was actually $325 uh, in the US. <clears throat> and this one's actually in really good shape. It's a little dirty, as you can see. Um, it was sold as non-working, but I think I can, I think I can fix that. Um, the watch is obviously in really good condition, <clears throat> but um, I think all it needs is a battery and just a little TLC. So I intend to go through it. I'm gonna clean up the case, get all the gunk out. I think this is a screw down crown, but I'll go over, I'll go over that. Um, I'm actually gonna restore the leather as well. This is the original watch strap from what I could tell. It's got a little bit of damage here uh, from the buckle, but I think I can clean that up. I've got some things and I'll, I'll go over that as well. Uh, but before I go into any of that, I want to give a little bit of history <clears throat> of this watch. Um, so many, many of you guys probably remember the years leading up to 2000. I know I was barely an adult at the time, uh, but I was and I was in the workforce. And I remember that every office meeting or corporate slogan included the phrase, into the new millennia, right? It was, it was ridiculous. So Blova, of course, was no different. And they introduced the Millennia Collection in 1998 to emphasize their commitment to new technology in the millennia. Now, I get this information actually from Mark Siriani's watch repair shop, so I just wanted to give him credit for that, but the Millennia Collection was officially introduced in mid-1998 and included a group of watches featuring new and innovative technology. The collection included a solar watch, which of course was powered by the light, uh, a motion quartz, which are watches powered by the motion of the wearer's arm, and the Vibra Alarm, which are the watches featuring the two alarm modes in this particular watch as well. Um, in 1999, Belova added to this list uh, with the new World Timer and the Perpetual Calendar series of watches to the Millennia Collection. 
All right, so this is the watch um, cleaned up, serviced. Um, so if you want to actually see the service, you can either wait through this video or you can click ahead and go ahead and see it. I'm gonna give actually a review on this watch now. Um, this watch, uh, it came out in 1998, like I mentioned. There were some others that came out as well. Um, you know, part of the problem with 90s styling, and don't get me wrong, I love the 90s. Part of the problem with 90s styling is that they just, uh, you know, they were trying to do some weird stuff. So I'll show you the other version right here of this watch that they sold. And it wasn't, um, it, it kind of looked like a, I don't know what you call it, a Chevy uh, Cavalier. <laughs> I'm not really a fan. This one's nice because you can actually replace the straps if you so wanted to. Uh, so it makes these watches more um, timeless, I suppose. The one here on the right, of course, is something that uh, you're stuck with that watch uh, bracelet because it's a custom, you know, where you just, it's, it's, it's a size that you're just stuck with. Uh, I've already told you how much I paid for it. I've given you a little bit of a history about these watches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna weigh it and I'm going to do some other measurements. Um, there is no loom, of course. So there's no point in even showing that to you. Uh, this is 56 and a half, which is not bad. Uh, let's do the measurements. I think we already said it's 38, which is standard for the time. Yep, 38, perfect. The lug is 19, which is interesting because that is very common for a lot of Vengers of the 90s, including uh, this guy here, which is really cool. Um, the depth is 10, and the lug to lug, I think is gonna be like 38. Looks like it, yep, th uh, about 39. Okay, cool. All right, so now, um, just a couple things I'll talk about, right? You can see the alarm indicator at the bottom for uh, vibration is down at the bottom. The alarm set is at the nine o'clock location. And then you've got the indicator, which is changed by here. So I'm gonna go ahead and now do a quick uh, video for how to actually use and set this. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can use this watch. First, we'll set the time. In order to set the time, you can you pull it out once and you can rotate it. That's how you can set the time. Just for convenience sake, I'm gonna set it to seven o'clock. Now, the way the alarm works, and that's for both of them, the time needs to be set on the alarm set time at the same time as the actual time. And you do that by hitting the, the C button, which is this. So this is A, B, C, and I'll put a chart up just so you can see it. So I hold that down and you can hit it individually to make it go but once by minute or you hold it, hold it down uh, a couple seconds and then it will go. Now it's worth mentioning that the alarm will not set or it will not go off at the correct time if you do not have this set to the exact same time that you have. Um, the reason that is, is because I guess it's not, you know, it's older, it's not smart enough to know. Oops, I missed it, I passed it, so I'll, I'll just go around again. Okay, so now the alarm is technically off, but the times are set, so we can set it. So if we wanna set the time, remember by default it's already off, Couple minutes have passed, I had to read the instructions. If you want to actually set the time, you have to hold down the C button. But before I do that, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, remember that's A, B, and C. So B, you can change between audio and vibration. Currently it's set to audio, vibration, you can set it to, uh, you hit it and then it becomes filled. And now it's set to vibration. I'm gonna turn it back to audio, you can hit that again. Remember by default, that's already off. I wanna set the alarm now, so I'm gonna set it ahead uh, about a minute or so. And we will wait and you can listen.
All right, now that the you've heard the audio, we're going to set it to vibration. Now, you probably won't be able to hear it, but I'm gonna dub over another audio of it vibrating, um, but I, you at least will be able to see the spinning wheel. So now we need to set it again, so I'm gonna set the time. Just remember, you have to do it each time because it will effectively have reset and turned off. All right, so those are the two uh, alarm types. All right, so let's take a quick look at the movement. So the movement is a Citizen Miyota movement. It was from, as much as I can determine, was designed originally specifically for the Bulova. Uh, now it's been used in a number of other watches, uh, including a Brio and, and, and some others, but it was originally designed by Citizen Miyota for Bulova and offered originally in 1998. It's, it is a very high quality movement. I would say definitely as good as a Swiss movement. Um, probably more of the higher end sort of Ronda quality. Uh, you'll note at the bottom, and I have it there on the screen on the lower right of the screen, it has a, a very large weighted uh, wheel. Um, it's it's off balance and that's intentional to create the vibration and the movement that you feel. Uh, at the top you can see the movement, uh, the name, it is the AW00. This is the only designator that it has. Uh, there are a few uh, documents for it, but there isn't much. Uh, this was only made for about three to four years. Uh, they're quite rare. There's no surplus, there's no parts. So if you need one, you have to go buy uh, a replacement watch. Now this one is in fantastic condition. So that that was a huge plus for me. Um, it still looks like some of the, uh, the lubricant that was used in assembly is all still there and still good. All right, so before I go any further, I'm gonna cover a couple different things. One, I'm going to repair the watch straps. Then I'm gonna open up the case and clean it. Uh, then I'm going to replace the battery and then I'll put it back together and we'll see what it looks like. And I'll do those each in a separate section. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the watch and, and just do sort of a review. All right, thank you.
All right, and there we have it. Now, I know I've spent a lot of effort on this, on these straps, but I think it's important because this is a very rare watch and um, it is original. And so that, the fact that this is completely original now and looks almost like it's brand new is, I think, worth it. Um, I'll probably keep it for a little bit, maybe wear it once or twice, but uh, I'm likely gonna sell it if I can find an original box. Because, you know, you don't really get watches like this that come around all that often. It's, it's a very unique piece. And uh, for me, it's important that I've at least cleaned it up and I can document it, document the watch here for anybody who finds one or buys one and is interested in fixing it up, learning more about it. So there it is. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, uh, please like and subscribe. And I have a few more of the Millennia collection coming out and I'll probably just do one video just quickly going over the Millennia collection. But uh, again, thank you for watching. I know it was a long video, but I appreciate it.